the ring ceremony uh, began about 20 years ago uh, when I was, uh, for the first year or two I was at MBA, I was watching these juniors come into the main office to pick up I guess we fixed that. Uh, so I was watching, uh, you know, these hundred or so juniors pick up rings in the morning, and I thought, well, maybe we should make this more than just a pickup. And so we had an elaborate ceremony of donuts in the dining hall, and made a few just with the sen just with the junior class and it has now evolved into what you see this morning. In fact, this is the first time we've ever had a program. I thought it'd be nice for some of you to have a program as a remembrance. It was also about that time that uh, I went to Houston to an alumni event, and I vaguely remember I was on the top of a large building in downtown Houston, probably up. 50 stories or so high, and this older woman walked into the alumni gathering. Uh, she must have been in her 80s. And she said, I've been reading your magazine, and I, uh, I wanted to come tonight. My husband died a few months ago, and, and he loved MBA, and I wanted to give you his ring. And so it's a 1924 ring. I have it on this morning. It's remarkable how it looks just like uh, the ones today. Uh, incidentally, my wife says to take it off by the end of the day. She says, you're already married to that school. Don't wear it all the time. <laughs> it's been nice to have a senior welcome you and an alumnus speak. And that's been another addition. And, and people make fun of us for the ring the Nashville scene in, in You're So Nashville has had a line like You're So Nashville if you still wear your high school ring. And they're obviously referring to MBA. And then novelists like Pat Conroy in his book Lords of Discipline talks about the power of the ring. And incidentally, I was able to sit with him about a month or so ago at a luncheon and talk to him about the ring and, and this ceremony. That was a fun conversation. And it's fun to kind of play with the notion of rings. You know, we have a small football game tonight. And we kind of hopefully talk about, you know, the idea of having another ring on this same day. And it's wonderful to have the participation of alumni and relatives and some of our seniors in the presenting of the ring. And now that I've mentioned that, I'll remind you, but uh, when the juniors come get the rings, any MBA relative is welcome to come down and present the ring, just fall into the line. It's alphabetical, so they'll help you over on my right, but you're welcome to come down and do so. And to the juniors, I'm reminding you, please do not put on your rings until everyone or open your boxes because we'll hear a lot of noise from drop it rings until uh, everyone gets his ring. And while you're a student at MBA, the tradition is, is that the waffle should face you and after you graduate, the waffle should be turned and face the outside world. So those are my beginning notes. Uh, now we're going to hear some music. Uh, this is uh, a nice little story. It's a song called Brother. Uh, the band Need to Breathe sang it, and incidentally, the lead singer is a close friend and played football at Furman with our speaker today. So I'm going to turn it over now to our music groups.
about mentioned that song to me a month or so ago, and I, I remember mentioning it to Matt Smith and saying, you know, maybe y'all could do that, but we haven't had a follow-up conversation, so that tells you a whole lot about community, about people who are willing to do things to make things work for everybody. Well, we, as I said, have a student and then an alum speaking, so join me in welcoming Will Eskew to the podium. Good morning, class of 2017. I would like to welcome you to your ring ceremony. At this time last year, I was sitting in those same seats awaiting my ring. I was focused, however, on two things, if it fit and if it looked good. And that was, sadly but honestly, about the extent of my thoughts. The ring's symbolic meaning and importance uh, didn't really cross my mind. So when Mr. Joya asked me to speak, I began to think about what this ring really means to me and uh, what I wanted to express to you all. At the same time, I was also working on writing about my experiences that I've had on the Hill for my senior bio in the yearbook. Suddenly, I realized that these two topics merged. This ring is the physical representation of all of those memories and friendships that I've made over these past six years. It symbolizes all of those Friday nights covered in paint and Wednesday nights typing themes. It symbolizes the daily lunchtime conversations with my friends and the study hall spent cramming for tests. All of our successes and failures, the hard work put in and the rewards received, are represented in this ring and ceremony. These memories will be forever encapsulated in this small circular object, and one is reminded of them every time he thinks about his ring. This ring also represents the transition into new and more powerful leadership positions. You all will become key leaders of this school next year, and have the opportunity cr to create a lasting impact. The underclassmen will be looking up to you as role models in and out of this classroom. With this new responsibility, you must maintain the key virtues of honor, integrity, and fortitude, all of which are embodied by the ring. Now, I confess that my journey hasn't always been easy. I've traveled for most of my time at MBA, an hour or two uh, each day back and forth from school and uh, I've bounced back and forth from football to track. And the academics aren't always simple, but uh, fortunately I've always had a glimpse of a larger goal and belief. And I'm grateful to have made this journey at MBA. It's a story that will, I believe, fortify me for my entire life. This ring also signifies the camaraderie of the class. Everyone in this room has varying talents from theater to art, debate, sports, music, and academics. But despite how different your strengths may be, you all share one thing, MBA. The guys in this room are going to be your lifelong friends. They have gone through all the struggles with you <clears throat> and will stand right beside you in all of your future endeavors. This support group, however, is not only the class of 2017, but also the MBA brotherhood that is 150 years strong. So whether your ring fits or looks good, Know that under its external appearance, memories, friendships, and the MBA camaraderie dwell. With that being said, let's add another experience to this collection tonight in Cookville and pick up another ring. Thank you very much, and roll red. Thank you, Will. Our next... Uh, Speaker Todd Prevost, as you see, graduated from MBA in 1999 and then went on to Furman, and he'll give you a, a glimpse into his uh, career now in Nashville. Uh, some good photos of him behind me. Uh, I will also give you a brief uh, view of the backstory, and that is to say that uh, one of the great privileges I have is to get to know so many people and be part of their lives. and, and uh, I think Todd will tell you outside of his speech that it's been fun to talk about this morning and, and the comments he's about to make. Join me in welcoming Todd. Thank you, Brad. Uh, <clears throat> I love coming back to this campus. Uh, I love it. 
I love walking in the ball hall. I uh, love walking in the quadrangle. Uh, As a young man, when, when my home life was turbulent, uh, my time at NBA offered me a lot of stability. <sighs> to most folks, I, I think um, <clears throat> on the outside, it may appear as, if, as though I've cruised through life. Um, there's a lot more to my story than that. And, um, and so this morning, gentlemen, I'm going to tell you about, uh, give you a couple snapshots of, of what it's really been like to be me. And, uh, and my hope in doing so is that in sharing you uh, part, part of my story with you, uh, that you'll be more informed about what it's like to, to be you um, as, a, as a 16, 17-year-old junior here at NBA. You know, growing up as kids, uh, my brothers and I, we... We really, we had the best of, of everything, um, of, of the best of material things. We wore nice clothes. Our, our family went on snow skiing um, trips every spring break. My, my mom and dad always made sure that we had the best that the world had to offer. Um, we were afforded life's privileges. We um, attended private schools like Oak Hill and MBA. Um, in fact, my, my car in high school was a black Ford Bronco, which was arguably the coolest ride down Montgomery Bell Avenue at the time. Um, in high school, I enjoyed a lot of success in the form of accomplishments. I was a, I was a good athlete. I was an all-state all linebacker and co-captain of the 1998 football team. We won a state championship. Um, I played a, a leadership role in several organizations on campus, and I enjoyed enough academic success to be awarded, a, awarded an appointment to West Point. Um, but instead, I elected uh, to, to attend Furman on a football scholarship. So um, my, my college experience, it really mirrored a lot of the same success that I had in high school. I uh, studied Greek for three semesters, won a lot of football games, played a significant role in the student body. Towards the end of college, I was selected to join a sales company and, uh, and finished in the top 1%. So, you know, professionally to date, my career in commercial real estate is, out, is, is off to an outstanding start. Um, I've been a part of some of the largest transactions in the, in the history of Nashville and have earned a number of accolades. Um, so again, in the, in the world's eyes, <clears throat> I've been successful. Um, and while I've, it's true that I've enjoyed a lot of achievement, it's also true that I've experienced a great deal of pain and brokenness in my life. And the gift of that, that pain and, and brokenness um, has been learning that success, true success, is really being the most authentic version of myself. <clears throat> it's been a long road to reach that paradigm. You know, it's, it's taken me a long, long time to, 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 to learn that. Um, you know, <clears throat> growing up, uh, I learned how to project um, to the outside world that, that life was shiny, sparkling, and glittery. Uh, doing that on a consistent basis, uh, that creates a lot of work, you know, especially for a young man, my goodness. Um, my father worked as an executive for one of Nashville's oldest companies. And uh, early in my life, I'll tell you that, that I experienced, um, my dad is a, is a hero to me. His, his presence was very calming. Um, his, his steady voice was reassuring. His, his strength gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I, when I was a boy, I, I loved the way that my dad told stories. Um, I loved the way he made me laugh. I, I could always admire how my dad, um, he, he could communicate and connect with, it seemed like, just about any person, regardless of their background. Um, so again, in many ways, <clears throat> as a young boy, my dad was my hero. Um, but his commitment to being excellent in his work required him to travel. And sometimes he would travel up to two or three weeks in a row. And I can remember crying myself to sleep as a young man, um, really as a young boy, when he left on Sunday nights. Um, dad, my dad developed one of the most legendary sales forces in the company's history, 
But his absence from home wounded me deeply and at times made my home life chaotic. When I entered MBA as a seventh grader in 1998, my mom had just given birth to two twin boys, which, mean, which meant that I had four brothers spanning 15 years in age with, with one parent to raise us the majority of the time. You know, that's challenging. That's really challenging. <clears throat> one story that really resonates with me is an African tale. Um, it's this great story about the power of the presence of men that's found in, in the small village in Africa. Young male elephants were acting out of character. Uh, they were acting very unnatural. They were acting antisocial and behaving violently, destroying cars and pushing over trees and even killing small animals. The park ranger assessed the situation and decided to import bull elephants. Let's bring in some old male elephants, teach these young um, elephants how to act. And as a result, within weeks, order was restored. More times than not, the bull elephant of my family was, was, wasn't present. And, and so in some ways, the story of the small village in Africa illustrates a picture of where I grew up. Trying to figure out how to be a man without a great deal of guidance created a lot of pain for me. <clears throat> Arthur John Eldridge, he suggests that masculinity is bestowed and that a boy learns who he is and who he's made from by a man or a company of men. As a microbe at MBA, I searched for affirmation. I wasn't sure that I could just be myself and that that would be enough. And so I used my best attributes to win other people's approval. I, I hoped that my performance in athletics and academics would, would settle my fragile sense of self-worth. So here's a quick story that, that illustrates how convinced I was that, that I, I must perform in order to get my needs met. In the fall of 1994, I was an eighth grader and I wrestled in the 120 pound weight class. I will give you a glimpse of, 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 of an event, a wrestling event. In, in wrestling, <clears throat> you can win a match by pinning someone or scoring more points than them. And uh, I was, I, I'd pinned all of my opponents that season. Um, I pinned everybody that I wrestled. Um, and I pinned everybody in the first round. There was one guy that made it to the second round and I pinned him in the second round. So I was, I was a good wrestler. Um, I found out later on that the, after the season that the coaches had, had just basically decided that I was the best wrestler in the entire conference. But before the HVAC tournament match, <clears throat> all I could feel was anxiety. Um, I was wrestling a, uh, a student from Brentwood Middle named Philip Chambers, and, all I, and, and I pinned him earlier in the year, and all I could feel was anxiety. And that, that anxiety said loudly to me, if you do not perform, life's going to fall apart. Um, you're not going to be okay. I tried talking to my coach, Kevin Wilcox, before the match about it. I, I tried talking to my dad about my, my state of mind, um, but they, they didn't seem to, to quite understand. Um, the match started quickly, and, and right out of the gate, I've got Philip on his back. I, I go for the pin and end up getting reversed and find myself on my back. This is the... This scenario is the only time that I've been on my back in a wrestling match. And as we are struggling, an idea develops. Uh, what would happen if I just let my shoulder down J just for a minute? What if I just rested just for a minute? And <clears throat> that consideration suggested that to me that, you know, metaphorically, um, it's an image that I might be able to get my knees met outside of performing. And, and that's exactly what happened. I, I let my shoulder rest for a minute, and I, I got pinned like that, and it was all over, you know? I, I think for so many years, I, I, I looked at that story as a, what if we just grinded through it? You know, just grind through it a little bit harder. Push your feelings down. But <clears throat> the beauty of that story um, is, is that um, when we believe in our, that our value is, is performed, uh, when we believe that our, our value is, is found in our performance, then, then we, choose, we end up choosing to hop on a ladder and our security is established by doing better than other people around us. It leads us into competing and comparing. As other people begin to climb higher, higher performance demands that I must too. And letting myself get pinned that evening, metaphorically, I was really choosing to get off the ladder 
and just learn how to be myself outside of performance. Who, who am I outside of performance? How do I know myself outside of performing, right? Um, gentlemen, I'll tell you this morning, you, you can get your needs met by just being yourself. Um, it, just being you is more than enough. I had to pay a lot of money, you know. I've spent a lot of time in therapy, you know, to, to get to that realization. And, and I, I, what a wonderful place you have here at NBA to test that theory out. You know, just, just to try, just being yourself here in a safe place and see if it's true. I, I bet it is. So growing up in a, in a home that, it, that it, at times was chaotic, um, that cost me a lot as a young man. It, it forced me to grow up a lot sooner than my peers. Uh, my response to our family's dysfunction as a young man was to try to fix it. And, and I tried really hard for a long time. That, that's impossible. Uh, you know, a young man can't do that. Um, so I grew up knowing about things that no child should know about. There was, um, I experienced a, a lot of um, uh, loneliness. There was innocence that was lost. I had an older brother that was two years older than me than, uh, that attended NBA. His name is Leland. And Leland was very gifted in, in many ways, in some ways m more so than I. And uh, his response to our family's uh, dynamics was to rebel. And, um, and his behavior at life really made life at home for me cha uh, very chaotic. So um, during high school, I felt a lot of fear um, f being with my brother. And, and I certainly felt a lot of sadness that, that he did, couldn't quite seem uh, to, to be at peace with himself. Later on as an adult, my brother became unstable and depressed. And, and two and a half years ago, he, he killed his hope for life. Um, he killed his hope that life could be different for him, that he could experience life in a different way, and he chose to die. And <clears throat> preparing to say goodbye to my older brother at his funeral was one of the most painful experiences of my life. I was, I was powerless over the finality of his death. The gift of my brother's death um, was it, it really informed me about having my insides ma match my outsides, right? having my insides match my outsides. That's an image of integrity. That's an image of wholeness. Um, you know, when my brother committed suicide, I, I, could, I couldn't project that everything is okay. It doesn't fit. Um, I had to sit in the truth of what happened, um, and that truth really set me free to be me. So what do we need from a life that's tragic? Um, what, what do we need to find in a life that's tragic? What do we need in a life that is, that, that is hard? Um, much of it can be practiced here at MBA. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell the truth about what it is like to be us. Uh, we need help. When, when we need help, we, we must cry out. We must ask for help. We, I used to think that counseling was for weak people. Um, <laughs> and then I learned about powerlessness, and I met a guy named Stephen James whose guidance has been life-giving to me. Um, in, in order to be with Stephen, I had to accept humility. You know, humility says that, that I'm not God and you're not either. You know, but together we can collectively come together and, and collaborate. And we can pool our resources together and, and be a part of something great. <clears throat> We've got to be open to, to grieving our losses. Uh, grieving our losses opens the door to healing. Um, if we're not willing to grieve, our hearts close and they become hard. Tonight, it, I have no question that y'all are going to play really hard tonight in the state championship game. I've got no question about that at all. That's, that's who you are. That's the character of your team. Um, by playing hard, and if the result is a loss, it's really going to hurt. You know? and, and I'm going to be sad if, if you don't win, um, but I'll also be glad for you because you'll have the opportunity how to learn how to grieve with, the, with, with brothers that love you and coaches that love you. That'll prepare you really well for life, because um, life will get hard. Um, life is hard. That, it's just a, it's a truth. Um, so we need faith. We need faith in whatever form it may be practiced that we can get our needs met by just being ourselves, but that we can trust the process and keep our hearts open. We need discipline that leads to hope. The solution of, of being in struggle um, is, is, is a willingness to stay in the struggle. You know, life is struggle. The, the, the solution is actually just being open to, to staying in the struggle. Um, oh, what does that take? It just takes heart. It's just, that's all it takes. 
It takes heart. Um, it takes courage. It's great. We, we also need a, 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 a repentant heart, and, and um, we, need to, we need to be able to have a willingness to, to practice uh, being able to say, I'm sorry, you know, when, when we hurt others, because uh, we will. Practicing service, like our trips to the Dominican Republic, uh, that reminds us that life's not about us. It gets us out of our own story. It invites us to play a bigger role, uh, 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 play a role in a bigger story than just ours, um, causing us to, to really be greater than self. Um, another suggestion is, is you, might, you might find an older male mentor um, at NBA and learn how to be strong, learn how to be a strong, vulnerable man, man um, and human being. Uh, one of the things that's so wonderful about MBA is you have so many different options to choose from here. I mean, I, I got a laundry list of, of faculty that come to mind right here that, that are trustworthy, you know, that, that are kind, that will treat your story, that will honor your story and your dignity. Um, finally, <clears throat> I would tell you that, that it's really helpful to develop friendship without judgment. And when it comes to this gift, I, I'm probably the, the richest MBA alum um, NBA has given me so many friends that, that I count as brothers and when my brother Leland died <clears throat> the majority of the friends that showed up and supported me the majority of the friends that just sat with me and let me cry you know just, and were just present with me um, the majority of those individuals they all they were classmates of mine in NBA um, so I've, I've learned that life is, is uh, it, in life, it's not easy to be human. You know, I've learned that life is hard, and I've learned that, that people are messy. But I've also learned that if we're willing to stay in the struggles of life, a story of redemption can emerge. One of the most powerful experiences of my life was, was just sitting down with my dad, you know, and, and trading apologies. You know, um, that there's things that I've done as a son that I wasn't proud of, and there's things as a dad that he, wasn't, that he did he wasn't proud of, you know. Um, just sitting there together and crying, being willing to, to be sad together, you know, a sense of loss um, of, you know, a, a time, a time ago. Um, is, our, is my relationship with my, my dad perfect today? Of, of course it's not. Um, but much of the pain that I've experienced has been redeemed. And, and Richard Rohr, he's got, this, he, he's got this great line, and he suggests that if we do not transform our pain, then we will transmit it. And what, what I find beautiful about life is that our greatest place of wounding can be transformed into our greatest strength. And from that place of strength, we can offer um, ourselves to other people. Like the form of the ring you're about to receive, life is cyclical. It follows a pattern. I get hurt. I cry out. I grieve. I trust the process. I'm healed. I give out of my healing out of my place of healing. Gentlemen, may this ring be a reminder to you uh, to keep your heart open and stay in the struggle of life. Thank you, uh, Todd, for being so authentic and honest with us about your story, and I know that uh, they'll remember a lot of this. Great to be with you this morning. Okay, we're going to now present the rings. So, as I said earlier, if you are a relative and would like to hand the ring to, the ju to a junior, just come line up here on my right, and uh, we'll help you get in line and make sure that you can do that. And I'm, I'm going to just read the names alphabetically. And uh, I'll start in just a moment. And the seniors, a number of seniors will assist as well. So if the first row would please stand. I think we'll have some music to accompany us. We'll recognize everybody at once at the end. Frist Allen. Hayes Alley.
Jack Anderson. Patrick Andreen. Bryce Artisan. Carl Bainbridge. Micah Battle. Jack Benson. Jack Brandis. Luke Burge. Magnus Campos. Jack Carey. Q Carlson. Logan Cashwell. Ty Chandler. Dean Cheevers. Josh Chang. John Cooper. Asher Kernut. Thomas Daniels. Drew Davis. Max Davis. Hudson, Hudson Dobbs. Matthew Dobson. Riley Dodd. Andrew Duffy. Palmer Einsman. Gabriel Elkin. Michael Elkin. Jake Evans. Alden Ferguson. John Fiervanti. Andrew Freeland. Hamilton Garber. Sam Garrett. Ben Golden. Brandon Glazer. John Glover. John Michael Glover. Will Gray. Aubrey Green. Jed Griffin. Will Hansen. George Harwell.
Dylan Hazelton. Jack Hales. Jacob Herndon. Will Hoffman. Brad Hornsby. Jack Hornsby. Tony Huang. Andrew Hudson. Laws Hunter. Liam Jamison. Caleb Jernigan. Turner Johnson. Andrew Kaplan. Boaz Kellner. Josh Key. Jarrett Knight. Ryan Cosson. Jacob Kovic. Warner Lamar. Mac Lassing. Michael Lee. Mark Lillard. Holland Lund. J.P. Mappis. Jackson Meredith. Drew Martin. Perry Matthews. Duncan McGinn. Joe McMahon. Gabriel Mendoza. Luke Montana. Ellis Moore. John Morfitt. Sam Morris. Joe Moxley. Connor Malloy. Thomas Neff. Tony Newhoff. Tanner Noonan. Dylan O'Donnell. Bo Osgood. Christopher Owen. Jackson Owen. Montgomery Owen. Edward Ownby. 
Christian Palm. Dan Parks. Wyeth Patton. Tom Peters. Will Peters. Jack Pickle. William Porter. Drew Powell. Colin Ragsdale. Ben Ramon. Nick Ray. Jack Renicky. Zach Richardson. Cal Ricky. Luke Rochford. Robert Rolfson. Ben Rosenthal. Nick Sartain. Jackson Satz. Addison Smith. Mac Smithing. Brett Starr. Riley Stenson. Austin Streety. Peter Taylor. Brian Thomas. Cole Thornton. Owen Underwood. Hayden Wachler. Cameron Wade. Joe Waller. Noah Womble. John Whitaker. Micah White. Richard White. Alvin Zong. And Vincent Zong. Join me in congratulating the class of 2017. Gentlemen, you may open your rings now and put them on. Join me in thanking the orchestra. Thank you. So Josh Houston from the Balfour Company is going to come up and just make a few brief comments. Thank you, Mr. Joya. Juniors, congratulations. I did not hear a ring drop, so that's, that's good news. Uh, parents, I just want to kind of briefly mention our warranty to you. You do have a lifetime warranty that covers resizing, re-antiquing, and re-polishing of the ring. 
We simply pick the ring up at any time here at school, send it to our plant, and mail it directly back to your home. It's about a three-week process, so pretty quick if we need to. Resizing is probably the most common thing that, we, that we'll have to do warranty-wise. You also have a four-year ring loss protection plan in place. If you lose the ring or it gets stolen within the next four years, we replace it for a quarter of the original cost. Unfortunately, this does happen, so a little peace of mind here. I will remain down front at the conclusion of the ceremony to check any sizing issues, juniors, or answer any questions, parents, that you may have. Congratulations again, and roll red. Thank you for being here this morning. It was a great celebration. Have a wonderful day.